We are pleased to be joined uh, by John Jones, teacher at Alder Avenue Middle School at Kata and a Catawba Project Advisor. Before we go any further, John, Catawba Project Advisor, I, in all the years I've been doing this, I've never introduced someone that way. What is Catawba? Uh, well, Catawba is a Native American world um, that uh, in our area there were uh, Native Americans who in- Your area meaning Egg Harbor? Egg Harbor Township, yeah. And, uh, what it was, uh, Catawba means people of the water, and the project started out as doing stream assessments. Um, even before I became a teacher, uh, there was a Dopta River program where teachers went out and did uh, water testing. And uh, it just morphed into Catawba, and it just seemed like a better way to uh, market our program. Talk about your journey into the classroom as a teacher. You didn't start out that way. No, I didn't. Um, sort of came out of college and uh, went into uh, landscaping, um, and I had a, a you know a landscape company where we designed and installed landscapes, and uh, went to school for ornamental horticulture, and kind of uh, took my path um, into teaching that way because in the winters I wasn't active, so I uh, I went into schools and uh, substituted for like seven years. And then realized, you know, I really had a passion for teaching, so I decided to make the transition. So it's interesting, this whole outdoor education thing that we've been doing, not thing, this initiative, and by the way, the panel discussion, check it out on our website if you missed the, the broadcast itself. Um, and you're part of that forum that we're having. Mm -hmm. How do you define outdoor education? I, I, I just see outdoor education as an opportunity for the kids to um, experience learning uh, without being contained within the four walls of the classroom. I, I mean, I really do feel that with all the different learning styles that you have out in the classroom uh, amongst the students, it's great for them to, uh, to be able to open up their senses a little bit more by experiencing the outdoor classroom. So, you know, instead of learning lessons, you know, for example, uh, you know, the life cycle of a frog. Hold on, is this part of the Catawba? Project? Yeah. Life cycle of frog, I interrupt you. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, I'm just saying that, it, you know, it's just a lesson that can be learned better outside by experiencing, you know, through all the senses rather than just seeing it and hearing How about it. How would you it. do it? Uh, well, we have a pond in our outdoor classroom, so, you know, we have uh, plenty of life in the pond, and, you know, part of that is the uh, frog eggs to tadpoles to, you know, the adult frogs. So, I mean, you, you see and experience it at the different stages, so... Uh, instead of projecting it up onto the classroom and showing the kids pictures of something that uh, they could go out and see it. And, you know, a, a kid outside is, is definitely going to, um, you know, react differently than a kid in a classroom. Why? Uh, because, I mean, if you had a chance to sit in a seat all day and have someone <laughs> deliver information to you that way. Lecture. Exactly. I mean, it would be, um, you know, you, you'd be able to see it, touch it, pull it out of the pond, you know, get everything involved as far as your senses are concerned. But I'm curious about this. As a teacher, how does it change the way you actually teach when you're outside? I'm curious because, you know, as a student of education and communication, I often mm -hmm. think that two-way communication versus someone lecturing is clearly more engaging, if you will. Are you more engaging and more of a loaded question? I know more of a facilitator outside than inside. Uh, that's exactly the, the way it is. I'm a facilitator outside. I, you know, I'm not a deliverer of information. I, I sort of set the kids up with their goal, their objective, and then after that, I, I mean, I just got to get out of their way and let the learning happen. Get out of the way. Yeah, I mean, because the kids are going to know that they have to find this type of information. They have to uh, gather this data. And, you know, I think learning happens best when kids are, take ownership of the learning and, and they are going out there to grab the uh, information that they need from the sources that they have. Uh, the, the less I stand and manage step by step as part of what they need to know and what they're, how they're going to get it, uh, the better off they are. I mean... They'll succeed and fail. I mean, they'll, they'll, they'll attempt to, you know, mm. try to access the information in one way, and you know, it might not be available. Let me play devil's advocate here. Uh, our, one of our sons, uh, in the grades that you're talking about right now, was actually I don't want to give away too much so people can figure it out if they choose to. But I was I was not thrilled that a course he was taking. I asked him to describe it, and he said, "Well, the teacher teaches and lectures for a long time, and then there's a test." I said, what else? He said, pretty much that's it. 
And the point I'm making is that I was, I was concerned about that. But for those who are wondering about test taking, how does one, in the Catawba project, how does one get tested for his or her knowledge? Or is that not the goal? I know it's a loaded, loaded question. But I've been thinking about this. Yeah. Um, you know, as a teacher, it's, it's difficult because, yeah, we're, we're, we're in an age of testing. And, and the you, state has standards. Uh, sure. I mean, and you have to meet as those As the federal standards. government. But I mean, if you look like the next gen science standards, I mean, they, they leave space open to hit benchmarks and to assess whether or not the kids have gained those benchmarks in other ways rather than just sitting there through a multiple choice test or an essay test. I mean, you can, you can observe a kid and see if, you, if the learning is happening. And then you, you get the results later on when they take the standardized test. So if a kid is taking ownership of their education, then all of a sudden, um, if you ex expose them to an outdoor classroom, you expose them to that opportunity to, um, you know, just to get out there and just to How about be dive curious in with their hands. Learned. I'm yeah. sorry for interrupting. Mm -hmm. Only a few seconds left. This is very rewarding for you, isn't it? Oh, of course. Because? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you just see there's all kinds of kids. There's all kinds of learning styles out there. And if you're in a classroom, you're only going to reach so many kids because that's their strength. If you all of a sudden change things around, of course I'm going to spend a lot of my time in a classroom, but the time that I get to spend outside, then all of a sudden I'm going to catch that kid who is not the sit in his seat and you know, taking information. He's the kid who has to get out there with his hands. He's the kid who has to uh, you know, experience yeah. things through other senses. John, I just want to say this. Um, first of all, great job. You're engaging yes. a lot of students. On behalf of all the, those of us who are parents of kids in public schools, we say thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. John. Check you next time. Well done. Thank you. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by the PNC Foundation, the Turrell Fund, supporting right from the start NJ, the New Jersey Education Association, Berkeley College, Choose New Jersey, the law firm of Gibbons PC, and by Verizon. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.